I'm happy for Reggie. Yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we are in UCLA's team meeting room. Look at this place. Man, look, nice seats. A little comfy sit down, listen to coach, watch some nice film. Man, this thing is nice, man. The acoustics are good, the sound is good. And then, and then, look what you get a chance to see. Nice practice field in the background. This is Los Angeles, baby. You can't beat it. And now we are joined by head coach of the UCLA Bruins, UCLA Bruin legend, one of the best running backs to ever play here, Deshaun Foster, man. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. First of all, congratulations, head coach, head <laughs> coach of UCLA. Mm -hmm. So when you were playing here at UCLA, could you have ever imagined that you would be the head coach at UCLA? No. That wasn't a dream of mine, not until after I retired and everything, but, you know, it was just so surreal being able to be the head coach here at the university that I played at. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears out there on that field, and, you know, to be able to come back full circle was pretty amazing. Yeah, so you were here under Chip Kelly. Mm -hmm. You leave, take a job in the NFL, and then, what, February 12th, 2024, you're the head coach. Tell me about that time in in between. <laughs> it was a uh, it was a good three days. Didn't really move to Vegas. Didn't didn't leave the city yet. Yeah. Um, that was Super Bowl Sunday. Okay. And then after Super Bowl, Martin called me and I went over to his house and he offered me a job. So it was it was a whirlwind, you know. But uh, I'm excited about it. You know, great opportunity, and um, I'm just ready to get out there and play some ball. So how important is it to you being that you played at UCLA? You, like you said, blood, sweat, and tears in the Rose Bowl, on the field, at practice, in the building. How important is it to you to return UCLA to greatness? It, it, it's, a, it's a lot because, you know, I'm invested in this. I'm a Bruin through and through. And it's just something that I want to see the school get back to just where we were at, just the, the type of ball that we were playing, you know, get back to – and just the top of we were top of the pack at that time, and you know, hopefully we can do the same in the Big Ten. Yeah, and what what things need to be done at UCLA now to return UCLA to where you want it to be? Just exposure, getting it, just getting the brand out there. Yeah, you know, um, pe people know about UCLA, but they haven't been over here and really felt it or seen it or just really been a part of it. So I just want to make it open so everybody can come out here and and then. Um, just let them feel what we really have to offer because I don't think you can get a true feel about us unless you come out to practice and feel the energy and just feel the vibe. Yeah, and that's one thing that I feel like is different now is that there is an energy surrounding mm -hmm. UCLA. Like, what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of create that energy, not just within your own team, but in the community, the recruiting space and everything else? Just trying to hit the ground running, getting as much exposure as I can. Um, getting recruits over here multiple times, the coaches also, um, donors, you know, just I want everybody to, to really feel UCLA and, and see how much of a family we are, yeah. you know. UCLA's been taking care of me since 98, you know, that's a long time. Yeah. So it's a, this is a true, you know, it's a true 40 year plan that UCLA has. And I'm just glad that I can actually show people and I'm the walking blueprint of it. And you have, obviously, the le landscape of college football has changed since I came on my recruiting trip with your your last year there. And, like, there's NIL. There is, you know, the transfer mm -hmm. for a portal. You as a, you know, as a first-year head coach, what's your plan to deal with NIL, first of all? Just you got you to gotta embrace it. It's something that's not going anywhere. So you got to embrace it. You got to get the donors and everybody up to speed so they understand exactly what this is. And then you got to have a plan. You know, you can't just go in there and just trying to throw money at everybody. You have to have a plan and you have to market the program and you have to have a plan into letting them know exactly what we have to offer in that space. And mm -hmm. so how do you react now? Right. Because it's pu public knowledge. You, you, you had a little controversy when, when, when you were at, mm -hmm. in school, re, 
that would be called NIL now or something like, like that. Do you look back at it now and just and like Reggie Bush does? It's like, come on, come on, man. This is. I mean, it is what it is. But you know, it's um, I'm just glad that it's come full circle and players and athletes are being compensated for what they're doing. You know, so. Yeah, because it's. I, I remember, you know, looking back at it and saying, hold up, we hold value that we are bringing money in to, to the university. So, so, so does that make you smile and are you excited about it? That a guy that you were at school with, Ed, Ed, Ed O'Bannon, helped like spearhead where things are now. Like UCLA is literally the hub of NIL and, and being on the forefront of things. Yeah, just uh, they... Ed O'Bannon helped everybody get ahead of it, you know, so I'm just glad that we were able to, to capitalize on that space and yeah. now these uh, athletes are able to capitalize on their name, image, and likeness. Yeah, and <clears throat> that also leads to the transfer portal because part of it is talent acquisition, mm -hmm. but then it's also uh, talent de development, roster retention, mm -hmm. Like, what's your plan in terms of getting UCLA to be the best roster possible? You still have to recruit high school kids. And like I said before, I treat high school kids as draft picks. So we think you're like a first, second, or third round draft pick. And then free agents or portal kids. You know, if we got to plug a hole somewhere, we'll get a portal guy. But you still got to recruit and develop. That's the main thing. So I still want to recruit the high school kids, develop them. And then if I have any holes open, then I can plug that with portal guys. But once you get guys in my system and get them developed, I shouldn't have to go to the portal too much. Yeah, see, I, I love that. Like, that makes me happy because everybody is, well, not, not everybody, but there's a lot of people who are just trying a bigger, better deal and, you know, but I think that development of talent is going to be like the new currency mm -hmm. because that's going to help you retain your roster. Exactly. And in terms of recruiting, Southern California, huge recruiting landscape, mm -hmm. kids, you know, from, you know, from down in the south all the way up to the north. Are you focusing heavily in California or are you taking a more national approach on your recruiting? I still want to put a fence up in, in California just to keep the local talent here. That is good. But I do want to cast a bigger net and recruit nationally. UCLA has a brand that's national and we should be able to recruit nationally. I play with a lot of guys that were from out of state, so. Yeah, and what are, what are some of the things that you're looking for in recruits outside of the tangibles, right? Because every, everybody knows, like, somebody who's big, fast, strong, throws the ball well, catches the ball. What are some of the intangibles that you're looking for that represent UCLA football? It's more of, like, mental stuff. Uh, how does he compete in the classroom? Does he do it the same way on the field as he does on the field? What's his exceptional trait, you know? I can't bring guys in here that's gonna tear down our culture. This is yeah. a true family environment, true family culture. My guys play hard for each other, they play hard for me, but because they trust me. So I can't have guys in here that's gonna tear that down because we're gonna be taking steps back. But as long as these kids are, you know, I, I, I do a good job in finding why they're playing ball, yeah. and why do they like this, then we should be okay. Exceptional <clears throat> ability, you just said exceptional. Explain to me what that means. Just your exceptional trait, like what do you get to? So, let's go back to you. <clears throat> what would you say your exceptional trait was coming out of high school? What's uh, something that you do, you show on film or in your games every game, every Friday night? Oh, just that I was gonna play with a lot of energy and, and, and be, and just make special plays. Exactly, okay, so, motor. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's an exceptional trait. Now, now how often does he get to his exceptional trait? Do you see that in every play? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I want. Because it's, uh, I would say mine might have been vision, stiff arm, something like that. Yeah. Now, are you seeing, do I get to my move? Yeah. Kind of like basketball. Does yeah. Do you get to his move? Okay, yeah. Can he, I mean? can, can he get to his spot exactly. and then execute? Yep. And I remember watching you play in, in college and watching you play in the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. Big back. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, mm -hmm. what, what Derrick Henry was now this is what you were at that at that point in point in time. Is the big back going to be making a comeback? I mean, I hope so. I just want the back to make the comeback. Yes, yeah, so, right. You know, before we even get the size of them, let's just get the running backs back. But I think it's going to come full circle. Christian's doing a good job in the NFL, just being consistent yeah. year by year. Um, other guys are doing the same thing, but you know, we got to get the value back on that position. Yeah, and and you got a chance to play in a 
Super Bowl mm -hmm. uh, with with the Carolina Panthers. What does what are you able to take from you know your experience in the NFL to use in a college environment? Just letting them know about the adversity that you're going to go through. Nothing's going to go smoothly. That Super Bowl went up and down, up and down. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you got to always just prepare. Never take anything for granted, and um, always finish the game. You know, yeah, and it's hard. I think that was our biggest thing in that Super Bowl. We didn't quit. Yeah, we might have been down, but we didn't quit. Yeah, and we kept fighting, kept fighting, got back within. I think we tied it up and then lost my field goal. So. Yeah. So to go back, when you were getting ready to go out to Vegas, you were getting ready to take take the job with with uh, AP out there. Mm -hmm. And how cool is it for you and AP to be getting your first shot at the same time? It's awesome. Because I was taking that job to help support one of my friends in that situation. Yeah. You know, him getting a job at the Raiders and changing the narrative of NFL head coaches. You know? I, yeah. I, I kind of like that story, so I wanted to be involved in it. And, you know, I was just thankful that he understood what was going on. And yeah. you know, I'm in the same situation he's in in college. So, yeah. You know, we want to change this narrative and just let you know um, – X players can play, we can teach, we can coach, and, you know, we're knowledgeable just like other coaches. See, I love that, too, because you have so many former players, right, who, who want to be in coaching and have so much value, mm -hmm. and, but to see them get involved in it and then get the opportunities, man, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, when, when you're looking at, you know, being a first-year head coach, right, you obviously have to have some – mentors or people that you're going to call when, you know, when times get hard or you just need some advice, who are some of those people that you're going to lean on? Most of my running back coaches, uh, Kelly Skipper, Jim Skipper. Jim's retired. Kelly's the running back coach with the Bills. I had Kelly in college. I played mm -hmm. for Jim in the NFL. They're, that's his dad. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've been in the Skipper family for a long time. Um, Kennedy Palomalu. Oh, I love Coach yeah, Oh, so Coach Pola, KP, man. Yeah. He's probably one of the smartest like guys where he taught like the wine back with the, with the bob and everything. All, man everything and he's somebody that really gave me a platform when I was his assistant he gave me a platform and really let me coach you know? yeah he helped me find my my voice basically yeah you know? so I owe a lot to him Todd Bowles um, any and everybody that's been a head coach has reached out to me yeah Dave Roberts you know? oh so it's been it's been a lot of people. Pete Carroll, yeah, across the street, you know what I mean? Like guys, just reaching out and wanting to, to talk to me and just try to give me tools and ways to help me be successful. Yeah, so it was just awesome, just even from different sports. So that's what was cool about it. That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, when you were here, obviously with the with the last re regime with with Chip Kelly, mm -hmm. what did what did you learn under under Chip? That run game. He Coach, knows that boy. That, that, run, that run game. You know, Coach Kelly taught me a lot in that run game. But, you know, he's um an exceptional mind. He's yeah. very gifted in the offense coordinator, just as a football coach. Yeah. You know, so I just loved um, everything that he taught. He's a true players coach, just in the and and that's in the aspect of wanting to take care of your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wants his guys to be Full speed yeah, he's all Saturday. about the science. Exactly. Like he's all about the science. Yeah, so I like that component about it because he never wants to put your body in a bad or a compromising situation, and that's a true player coach. That's an interesting thing because people fashion themselves as players coaches, and you think that that's the difference in being a players coach. You taking care of them, or are you just a friend? He's taking care of your body. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I, well, well, I guess it's like the difference. In, in a different way between being a parent and being a friend. Exactly. Like, like, am I doing what's best for you or am I just trying to be cool with exactly. you? UCLA is headed to the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. they, it is, the Big Ten is, oh, it's just physicality and all these things. But, and UCLA kind of, I think, gets a bad rap because if you look at the team last year, they ran the ball, they would run the ball down your throat, played physical, strong defense, but why is there this perception about UCLA as not as physical as everybody else? No idea. Because it was almost the same thing when I was in school. Yeah. I think it's just... Is it the colors? Is it the what? I, what? I have no idea what it is. But all, all we can do is just keep lining up each Saturday and playing. You yeah. Know? And um, I think my guys do a good job of that. They, they don't get too frustrated. They don't hear the noise. They know it's there. Yeah. But they don't get too too caught up in it. They just yeah. let it go and uh, just let the their their pads do talking. 
What does success look like for UCLA in year one and five years from now? Number one thing we want to do is make sure that you see my, my pillars every game we're out there. Discipline, respect, and enthusiasm. Okay. You see that in my players no matter I win, lose, or draw. You go out there and watch them play, and you're like, man, them boys play discipline. So when I, when I hear that, I hear discipline, you shouldn't see personal fouls and probably one of the lesser penalized teams. Yes. Is that what that you means? You shouldn't be out there shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. You know? Because it's already hard enough to win. Yes. Now, holding stuff like that. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, 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 yeah. But pre-snap penalties, offsides, false yeah. starts, we should be able to manage that. Yeah. yeah. And what does, and the second pillar was respect. respect. What does respect mean? Respect the game, respect your teammates, respect the opponent, respect me, respect your professors. Just the whole, it used to be love. Yeah. But now it's just respect. Yeah. Same thing. Yep. And enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Just get out there and have fun. You know, it's, yeah. it, there's enough dark moments in this game. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that. <laughs> you know, that we don't need to create them ourselves. Yeah. So go out there and have fun. It's the same game you were playing when you were a little kid. The same game I played at second grade all the way up to 30. It's just that the venue changed around it, but it yeah. was the same field. Yeah. You know, so never lose touch of that. Yeah. And um, so to all the recruits out there, to all the families, mm -hmm. right, that are thinking about, oh, should I, should I send my baby all the way? across this country should we go down down the street uh can, can you tell the people mm -hmm. why ucla and why this is going to be a great place for not only them to play football but for them to be people ucla is a place where we're building men um we just make sure that we we put our guys in situations to be successful on and off the field um, there's more to life than ball like I always tell my players all the time, Jerry Rice played 20 years of football. You'll be lucky to play 20 years. Yeah. And he's going to be a regular person way longer than he was a football player. So that life after football component, that aspect is huge here. That's why it's books and ball. And you give me an opportunity to coach your son, I guarantee I'm, I'll um, build a great man for you. And so you, you have your own sons. And... I've experienced this as a dad, which is, I'm like, and I've talked to other former professional athletes, mm -hmm. and you're like, kid, will you listen? <laughs> Do, the, does the Sean Foster head coach mm -hmm. even have to talk to his kids and be like, why, why are you so hard-headed? Every now and then, it, it, it's still dad. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird component in there, but... I think now it's coming back because he's getting into high school. See, see, that's the way my older son is like. It's, he's seeing the value in it. Yes. Him. So now it's a little bit more listening. But yes, I was experiencing that. Yes. Yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a true thing. Yeah. And before we get you out of here, so we play a game called Reister or Raw. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a statement. Okay. And then you tell me, am I Reister or, or am I wrong? You can elaborate if you want. Yeah. Am I Reister or am I wrong? Okay. The worst thing to ever happen to UCLA football was Hurricane George. Oh, you Reister. Was that, my, was that 98 when we went out there? Yes, yeah. yes. That yeah. was the Miami yeah. where the game got pushed back from <laughs> September to, to December. Y'all were 10 and 0. First year of BCS? Yes. Headed to the Natty. Had to play the game? Well, didn't have to play the game. But, but we thought the BC, BCS would. Yeah. Because we didn't know. Yeah. Because the first year we thought the BCS might knock us out. Had to go, had to go out and play the game. We should have left earlier in that year and just played them in yep. September anyway. Yeah. Because the hurricane didn't hit. It didn't even hit. Yep. The hurricane mm. didn't hit. Those people across the state, across the street, played Florida State, I believe. Mm -hmm. That same week, somewhere in there, out there, and they went and played. We should have played the game, but you know, it uh, stuff happens. You know, we uh, we came up short against the Hurricanes and ended up playing in the Rose Bowl. See, that's like me. Take it, take, take a deep breath. <laughs> <sighs> and, it, and mine is about Miami too, because in 2000, um, in the 2001, 2002 season. Uh, at Oregon, we ended up playing in the Fiesta Bowl against Colorado, sure and did. we were number two in the AP and USA Today poll. And the BCS put um, Crouch after he won that won, won that Heisman, Heisman, which is another whole nother conversation. He won that Heisman that yep. year. Yep. Yep. <laughs> am I right, or, or am I wrong? 
you're conflicted about how to feel about Reggie Bush getting his Heisman back because you're happy for Reggie, but something good happened to the guys across the street. I'm happy for Reggie. Yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. It. I'm happy for Reggie. We don't even acknowledge That's it. That's it. I'm happy for Reggie. Am I Reister or am I wrong? UCLA versus USC, best uniform combination game in all of college football. Yep. Yes. That's true. <laughs> it actually needs to be played on a uh, rivalry it? weekend. It oh, needs to be on rivalry yes, weekend. Yes, so rivalry weekend. It's the week before, but we should be playing that weekend. Yeah, because that like I, both I, I, teams in home jerseys. Yes, like it's yes. A, and that's that, that's why having Cal as the last game, it's it's yeah. supposed to be it's UCLA. Supposed to be, yeah. It's supposed to be USC, UCLA. That was like the color rush before the color rush. It, it really was. Yes. You know. Yes. See. Both home games. The home teams got their home jerseys on. It's, it, it was a color rush before the color rush. Yep. And for everybody who doesn't know, UCLA, top applied to university in in the entire world. Yep. I mean, great at sports, home of legends, innovators, and everything else. And um, am I right, or am I wrong? UCLA will be back on top in short order. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right. Yep.